Hello everybody, welcome to Unbox Reviews, and today we're going to do a review of the 5-in-1 weather station by Accurite, and a quick install on top of a tower. So let's get to it, right now. So here we are, it's our 5-in-1 weather station. Pick these up on Amazon, I'll throw a link in the bottom so you can see it. So to do a little bit of explaining, we got wind speed up here. We have two solar panels, wind direction, the temperature reader I believe is on the bottom, you can't actually see it. We got our mounting hole here, we won't be using the stock mount, we will be using a piece of galvanized pipe. And right here it will tell you how much rainfall you've gotten, it's self emptying so it will dump the water, you don't have to do anything about that. It comes with this guard in here to protect it from leaves or anything which may actually fall in there anyways, but it won't get stuck in the system. You have a self-leveler here, and you also have a humidity monitor in here. So total you have wind speed, wind direction, rainfall, temperature, and humidity in this. And I haven't used it yet, so this is just an initial review. I got mine with the Smart Hub, so I can use the app, but I mainly got it so I could upload weather to Weather Underground which is a crowdsourced weather. It's kind of interesting. So there's this piece. The solar panels, they do not power this. This is powered with batteries. However, there is a fan inside to keep the temperature correct. So the solar panels will power the fan and it'll blow air over the temperature sensor so it doesn't read hotter than what it really is when it's setting in the sun. So that's what those are for. So you will need batteries. The batteries will go in here, and it takes four double A's. And I would recommend actually using lithium so you don't have to change them as often. They're just a better battery overall. They do cost about twice as much as a regular battery though, so you might want to keep that in mind. So in the box you'll get a couple things. You'll get a Cat5 E cable. That's if you get the Smart Hub. If you don't get the Smart Hub, you won't get this. You will get a AC adapter, which is also for the Smart Hub. Let's see if we can get a close-up of what that actually says. Somebody might need that. And if you can't read it, it says 250 milliamps, 5 volts. So, if you happen to lose it, that's what you're going to need. And then it has a barrel connector on the end of it. And this also comes with a smart hub. As far as this unit is concerned, all it takes is batteries. And then you will need to either get the smart hub to read the app. Or Accurite sells a display for your house. Collar displays or I think just black and whites probably also. That's entirely up to you. I'll probably just get on the internet and check it anyways. And the Smart Hub, since we've talked about it a bunch but you haven't actually seen it, it's right here. It has, I believe this is an antenna. It sets up like this. The bottom of this thing, you got your sensor status light. It's blue. It'll pop up here. And then you got your instructions there on the bottom. If you need to see those, feel free to pause it. The weather station did come with some paperwork. I don't know where it went. I obviously didn't. However, I did find the Smart Hub paperwork here. And it'll tell you everything you need to know about turning it on and hooking it up. It, it only takes a minute or so. So there's that. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. You really don't, don't need to take any advanced course to be hooking this thing up. So once you have that, then you can just uh, go to the Play Store for your Android phone or the Apple Store if you have an iPhone and download the Accurite app. It should be like the first result or something like that. Not real difficult. And then it should work. The app is, it's a little fidgety. I'm not, they need to work on it or something, but it does work. Well, at least on my phone it works. The reviews for the app are kind of spotty. So you might want to keep that in mind if you're really concerned about it. But I'll be uploading the weather underground anyways, so I probably won't use the app that much. The wireless range of this unit 
is 330 feet or 100 meters but that is definitely wishful thinking or very very good environments like both are very very high with no blockage between them so i'd cut that in half for reliability assuming that the unit will be in your house so it'll have to go through walls and everything else and that's pretty much it for this unit here it has bubble level on it you need to face it south and it is properly labeled on how you should face it there's an arrow I don't know if you can see it. There it is. There's an arrow right there. So it needs to be facing south. So figure out which way is south and go from there. Then you got your bubble level. Make sure it's level. It's important otherwise the rain gauge has no idea what's going on. So like I said earlier we're going to use a galvanized pipe to put it on a tower with some U-bolts. Uh, and we'll go prep that now and get it painted. Okay, so what we're going to do now is since this is a new piece of galvanized pipe, it's three quarter inch. By 36 inches long we need to get ready to paint it you probably don't need to paint it if it's galvanized it shouldn't rust or at least not too quickly so we'll just take these ends off here some may not have these ends on them and then we just have a dawn dish soap and an old rag there's a oil on the outside of these when they're new so we're just trying to get that off so the paint will stick better And there's a sticker up here. I tried to peel it off, but I don't think that's going to happen. Probably just paint right over it. You could probably work at it to get it, but I'm not going to. It shouldn't take too long to get the oil off of it. And then after that, just rinse it off, and we'll be ready to paint it. Okay, so right now we're just going to paint this piece of galvanized and these two brackets. They've actually already been painted once, but we missed a couple spots on this one. And for this, we're going to be using Rust-Oleum galvanized paint. It's got a bunch of zinc in it, I guess. And this is galvanized, so it makes sense. So we already shook this can up, and we let this dry. Well, it still feels kind of oily. Maybe Dawn just soap wasn't the best idea. You might try something else. And we're going to use this box to just kind of contain the paint. It's not really that great for the environment. So the way I normally spray paint is... Uh, just strokes back and forth kind of and constantly hitting the button don't hold it down or else it'll it'll run and everything else okay so that might not take two trips you can definitely see where the sticker was it may or may not stick there I don't know it's galvanized so I'm not real concerned about it I just want it to match everything else so once you've got that painted just wait a little while and until it dries and then we can start putting it up on the tower okay so as it turns out it's really hard to film while you're trying to mount this thing however we'll go through a walkthrough right here the piece of pipe right there is the galvanized it's held onto the tire with two u-bolts and the brackets right there and then it just goes up there into the bottom of the weather station and you can see the two screws that we have screwed into the front right there and then of course it's working right now the winds blowing a little bit and the uh, bottom weather vane wind direction is slightly turning so that's all there is to it to uh, mounting it onto a pole it also comes with a plastic mount which you use a uh, 4x4 but we didn't want to use that so since we couldn't really film while we were trying to drill the holes out of the pipe or put it on the tower, the pipe size is a three quarter inch galvanized. I got it from the plumbing section at Lowe's. I imagine any other hardware store would have it. And then we had to mount it onto the pole and then mark it with a drill bit. That way we knew where we needed to drill into the pipe and then we just drilled the holes out. With the drill bits, we start off with a smaller bit and then worked our way up to a larger one. That way it was easier overall. And then we just got some regular screws and threaded those in with a small impact style electric drill. And then they went right in there. Make sure you don't over tighten them if you go that route because it will over tighten in a hurry and pull the threads right out with it. 
You could also possibly use a self-tapping screw. Since this is galvanized pipe, it's zinc coated, so it may be a little bit harder to drill through at first, but you should be able to do it. If you decide to use the provided mount, which is plastic, it, it may be okay, but it looks kind of cheap. You will need a 4x4 to mount it on. You'll have to drill into the 4x4 or something like that. But that's how we mounted that up there. And the only other piece that we have hooked up is the internet side of it. So we'll go show you that now. And once you have everything hooked up, you can finally hook up the internet portion of this. And this device will communicate with the weather station and then upload all your data to the internet. That way you can use the app for Accurite or you can use Weather Underground and check it on there. Okay, so like I said, we're hooked up to Weather Underground, and it is wonderground.com, or W Underground. And you can see all your local stuff here, such as wind direction, wind speed, current temperature, dew point. All this information here is coming from the weather station, for the most part. And then if you look below, you'll have your summary here, wind speeds, gusts, the average. You can set different dates. And then down here you have all kinds of graphs, which are actually kind of interesting. Like these are all wind speeds. If you get a gust, it'll have a dot in here. Then you'll have your precipitation. Right now it hasn't rained, but this will steadily go up and it will tell you the rate at which it's raining outside currently. So that's a lot of detailed information and it's quite helpful at times. And there it is. That's everything that there is to see. It's uh, hooked up to Weather Underground and providing weather data, which is really useful. It updates about every 30 seconds to a minute for that particular station. If you get other stations, chances are it'll update more frequently, possibly. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed this particular video. I know I found it quite interesting. And if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We appreciate it. And I'll see everybody in the next one.